Hey guys, welcome to Pest Startup 101 where we talk all things pest control related. In this episode, we are going to talk about... Let's talk about five ways to be the best tech. So even if you have your own company or you're working for someone else, I'm going to give you the top five things to be the best tech and to keep your job or, you know, for job security or to grow your business by being the best tech. Uh, when you first start out, you are a business, uh, you know, if you start out from the bottom, you're the business owner and a technician at the same time. So the five ways to be the best tech. Here we go. Number one, always be on time. Okay. So always be on time. Arrive at the scheduled time frame. Now, this helps you in your position as the owner or as an employee because you are a dependable employee and the office always knows, hey, if he's late, it's for a reason. He's always on time. Now, that gets you a good grace uh, if you ever do make it late because you're so consistent that if it happens, they know that it must be for some kind of reason and you'll get a pass. Now, the second thing about that is the customer always knows that you're going to be on time. So if your person is always showing up late, then in the future, when you're actually going to make it on time, the customer might decide to step out and say, hey, you're always late. So I'm not here because of what you've shown me in the past. Now, this this problem happens more with a customer has been on the contract for a long time. You become their technician. Maybe they started with you or maybe you became the technician and you just started showing up late on a consistent basis or you show up on time once and you show up late another time. Guess what? The customer is always going to remember the late appointment. People tend to store in their memory banks the negative. They always store the negative instead of the positive. Remember, negative is always more is always stronger than the positive. So you have to do the best you can to be on time. Uh, second best thing is to best way to take care of the always be on time is to notify customer prior to arrival. If you notify the customers prior to arrival every time then they know what to expect. They know to expect a text prior to you arriving, even if you're 10 minutes away, even if you're five minutes away. If the stop is super close, you should still text them, hey, I'm on my way. This will help you because it gets them ready. What if they're not dressed? It, get, it saves you from having to stand outside waiting 10 minutes for them to get dressed. They'll start getting dressed as soon as they receive the text because they forgot you were coming. Or... They're not home and they're on their way. Hey, I'm going to be there in 15 minutes. You're going to be there. And you texted them. You're going to be there in five. Okay, no problem. Can I, I'm going to start the outside while you're working, you know, while you're coming. You know, if, if they're not one of those type of customers that wants to follow you around, maybe you can get away with doing the outside. You get there. You take your time doing the outside. Make sure when they get there, you're still doing the outside. Don't do the outside too fast because even if they say, hey, we're going to be there in 15, even if they get there in 20 even if they get there 20 minutes later, they, in their brain, they still think that they made it there in 10, 15 minutes. And if you're done with the outside already, they're going to say, wow, he did that fast. And then maybe some something will pop in their head that maybe you didn't do it. Or maybe you did it too fast because you took advantage because they weren't around. You know, it depends. People are different. So, I mean, now with technology, they have cameras, so they can always check. But even with even so, even with that, you don't want them to have to go check and worry about that. A good thing would be if they, if you were still working on the outside when they got there, even if you're walking around super slow because you're being very detailed and you're checking every crack and every corner, then if they do decide to check the cameras, even though they saw you when they arrived, you were still working outside, some some customers will still go on that camera and check that you, were, you really went all the way around uh, multiple times, and they're going to see that you took your time, and they'll appreciate that. Okay, so the second thing. Always be prepared. Be prepared for the target pests. You should always be prepared for all general pests. But if you have a customer that is, let's say, for roaches, have your chemical bag set up for roaches. Have the, make sure you have the gels. Make sure you have the spray, the proper spray, the, pap- the proper aerosol that you use for this particular target pest. Make sure that you are prepared. So one thing that I like to do is when I finish a stop, when I know... Where my, well, you should always know where your next stop is because you have a schedule. But when you have the next stop, you look into that stop, you check the note, and it says, okay, target pass roaches. 
and then you go into the bag, into your, your, your truck, and you prep your bag for roaches. Now, you should always have some things on the side, maybe some glue traps and some poison for mice if they're on a general pest contract. And they'll throw it in, hey, I saw a spider, hey, I saw a mouse. You should always have that. But always be prepared for your target pest. And then, that's the best thing. Always check your flashlight. Make sure the battery is good. Make sure the flashlight is working well. So if you're still using batteries and you don't have a uh, uh, rechargeable uh, flashlight, I suggest you invest in a rechargeable flashlight. It's going to save you money as far as batteries concerned. And a rechargeable flashlight, you can also get the adapter piece where you can plug it up to the car and charge it in the car as well. And that's going to save you because a 20-minute drive of you charging it can help you get enough juice in the battery to get that stop done. And inspection is key when providing service. And when you're using that flashlight, it shows the customer that you're checking. If you just start spraying without looking, then you didn't do a proper inspection. That's not the way we do things, but uh, make sure your flashlight's good, okay? All right, so always be prepared. The next is nothing in life is free. So people don't appreciate free. Remember this. People do not appreciate free. So what does this mean? So if a person has a general pest contract and you provided, let's say, stations, Rolling stations, and then they magically disappear. Maybe construction, maybe uh, who knows what. Maybe they move from one property to another, and they move the contract over, and they didn't move the rodent boxes. Now, depending on your company, Terminex, we would just replace the boxes. But remember, Terminex is a big, a huge company, and they're not getting rat boxes for like 15 bucks each, 13 bucks each. They're paying maybe half that. Six bucks, five bucks each for rat boxes because they're buying in mass quantities. Now, us as a smaller business, we're paying double what they're paying. And sometimes uh, it, it doesn't add up as far as our numbers go to make a profit. So you can either take the hit or you can say, hey, I'm going to, uh, you know, replace three boxes. But I feel like you need six. Um, you can buy three additional boxes and then just hike up the price on the boxes a little or just charge them the regular rate for the boxes just so you can make some money back. Just the standard rate. Not what you get for the box, what you charge for the box. So we would get boxes, 13 bucks. We'll sell it for $25, $35, depending on the property. If it's like a huge uh, construction site, it'd be 35 bucks. If it's just a residential home, it'd be 25 But it's up to you, depending on your town and your rates. Uh, I know some guys that charge more just because they get a little uh, fancier landscape wrap box that costs them an extra five bucks. They'll charge an extra 20 for that box. So you can also go that route. So upselling that will make you a very valuable technician. If you are making the company money after you've already locked that customer in and you're still getting money out of that customer. And uh, you, one more thing, you're keeping them, you're keeping that cup customer as your customer, customer retention is huge. So if, you get, if you're one of those techs that gets tons of cancellations and the company has to keep shelling out marketing dollars to keep building up your route to keep you, then that's a problem. Eventually, the company is going to figure that out and you, you're going to be you're going to go. OK, or they're going to put you in a bad route and then you're not going to make any money uh, as far as commission if you get paid by commission. So if you're a business owner. Of course, customer retention is huge for you as well because that's your bread and butter and that's how you grow the company so then you can hire a technician and then they can take care of those stops. And then you can train them correctly because those stops have been serviced by you. You you uh, sign those people up and then you can pass them off. And this is when we get into the next uh, thing that's going to help you with your technicians, for your business owners. Always keep detailed notes and communicate with the office. You, uh, the, the owner, business owner slash tech, or you, the tech, communicating with the office. Always keep detailed notes. So depending on the on the look for the, um, I'm sorry, depending on the app that you guys use at your company, you're going to have different options as far as notes. So when we with the program that we use, we use Fieldworks, um, there's a thing called private notes where when you go to a customer's stop you can leave regular notes general notes that appear on the service ticket and then there are private notes 
So if you don't have that option, you can also uh, either save it in a notepad or send it in a in an email to the office immediately right after the service. And then they can keep that as a record to uh, copy and paste into the account. And then they can have a date, you know, time stamped for that day. And everything will be, you know, you can work something out with the secretary at the office. Now, if you are the business owner and your program does not use that, you're just starting out and you're just using Square, Square also has notes. So when you send the person a bill, the invoice, you can put notes there. And in the description of that customer, you can add notes to that. And then you can use that as your private notes when you complete the service. Now, that's going to be a little chaotic because it's going to be hard to transfer that over when you go into a a proper pest control program, but for the time being, until you grow, that is that is definitely workable. Uh, one last thing. So the fifth and final thing is to be knowledgeable. Now, this is for the technician. This is for the owner. This is for everyone in the company. When you're in front of the customer, you are that customer's representation for that company. So if you work for, let's say, Terminex, and then you go to the customer, you are representing Terminex. When they look at you, they think Terminex. They say that Terminex guy. They don't think, hey, Steven, Jason, they don't think that. They're thinking Terminex. They're looking at the emblem on the uniform. That emblem equals your contribution to the company, your dis- and, and, and you represent that company. So you have to be knowledgeable in the pest that you are treating. So if a customer says, hey, I don't get it. Why am I only getting ants here? You have to, depending on the type of ants that they have, you have to be very knowledgeable on that. And if you're not up to date on that, if you're just starting out, after you've been in the company 15, 20 years and you've been doing this for so long, you can, you know, you can fake it, which you shouldn't have to because you've been in the business for that long. But you can definitely fake it and uh, you know how to answer certain questions. But when you're just starting out, one thing is you might want to have some spark notes, which is just a small little one paragraph note on that bug and you can just review it and it'll say the description of the bug, the size um, and their, their typical tendencies as far as uh, they tend to go to the kitchen because of this, because they, they, they're attracted more to uh, sugar or you see them more in the bathroom because they're attracted more to humidity and they're attracted more to water and, or you might have a leak in the wall, you know, it depends. So try to be knowledgeable as knowledgeable as possible and, this will help if you have the spark notes. So when the site gets uh, up and running, peststartup101.com, it's uh, almost running. This is why the podcast has been uh, so sporadic with the episodes. Eventually, we're going to get things going in a nice, smooth rhythm. Thank you. And uh, please subscribe and share. But um, we're going to have a free download there. We're going to have a free download section or for our email subscribers. And they'll be able to download... Uh, certain things so you'll have uh let's say a checklist of how to prepare your truck and that pdf is going to be you're going to be able to download that you can put it on your phone and then you can always review it and in the it's a great checklist that you can check out in the beginning of the day and you can go through it and check everything and it'll help you out a lot throughout the day so it's just things like that and you'll we'll try to figure out some spark notes as far as for insets but that's a little bit more complicated that might be included in an ebook uh for the future um we will have we will be having an ebook on, um, you know, starting a pest control business for people that want to start one. You know, the, the must haves, what you should know, some stories sprinkled in there, uh, experiences we've had. So, uh, these are the top five best ways to uh, be a best tech. Okay. So, always be on time, always be prepared. Uh, nothing in life is free. Upsell, upsell, upsell. Always keep detailed notes and be knowledgeable. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, the next episode we're going to talk about is competitions rates and are you competitive? Are you are you charging competitive rates? So subscribe and uh, you'll receive notification when the next uh, podcast is is um, available for download. We are up on all major platforms. We are on Amazon Music, on Audible, on Spotify. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, we're everywhere. All right. Thanks for listening.